Okay, what I want to do here is show you how you find the spatial self-resonant frequency of a coil, not just the industry standard self-resonant frequency. We want to have the spatial self-resonant frequency. I've talked about this years ago. I think I've uh, explained it a number of times on different forums, and I also have a paper available on that. But what we're going to do is excite a coil, we're going to use just this one for the example, with a signal generator that we can vary, and I'm going to vary it at 100 kilohertz increments, and I'm using a Booten RF voltmeter, and I've got the probe down here next to the coil, and what we do is isolate this coil as much as possible from everything around it. Even the, underneath the bench where I have a keyboard, for the computer, even that will change it somewhat. So you want to try this, try to get this as isolated as possible when you do it. The probe itself, for example, is going to affect it. But we're going to be able to get close enough for demonstration purposes for me to show this to you. So let me go ahead and move up to the boot and meter so you can watch it while I tune the frequencies. Okay, what we're reading here now is the voltage from the probe and watch as I tune the frequencies. Do you see it going down? That means we pass the self-resonant frequency. And what we want to do is tune for the highest frequency possible. And so what we've found is right right here. And that frequency happens to be 25.9 megahertz. And you want to excite those coils with as low of a signal as you can. Here I'm exciting it with uh, 820 millivolts. So that's the way you find the spatial self-resonance of a coil. Isolate the coil, keep it away from metal as much as possible, away from extraneous circuitry, uh, equipment, so forth. Even this probe will have an effect on it. If you want to, you can back this probe back out and take and then adjust your booting down lower so that you'll read at a lower range. The problem is you'll probably get into the area of where you're picking up extraneous RF that's in the environment. But that's how you figure it and then what you can do is if you move another coil up to it and run the procedure over again what you're going to see is how the self-resonance has changed to the primary coil because of the proximity of the secondary coil. And then, of course, even this tertiary coil out here has an effect on that resonance. And when I have them both backed up here in the beginning, I'm not really getting a true reading like I'm telling you you should, because these still are impacting this coil. You should have this guy isolated out here in space with your meter and adjust your generator for your maximum meter reading. That's going to give you the starting point. Then when you match your coils, you take and you take this coil out of here, put this coil in place of it, run the same procedure, and if this one does not match, then you want to try either removing coils, hopefully it's not a matter of addition of coils because that's not going to work for you. You want to be sure you start out with coils that are large enough so that whichever one you pick as your reference, you can take and change that spatial self-resonance by removing coils of wire. Now forget about inductance. This has absolutely nothing to do with it. This will not work if you try matching inductance between the coils. You have to look at the spatial self-resonance. It's got to do with how it's wrapped, what it's wrapped on, uh, how you terminate the ends. There's any number of things, like this one here has some black paint and rubber tape on it. That drastically impacts the self-resonance as opposed to the straight L3. This one I've played with it, I've sprayed it with clear varnish and so forth, and it definitely is different than the rest of them. So you have to make adjustments to these coils to bring them into sync. And then you can go ahead and proceed on with your three-coil system.